makes sense to actually introduce you to the landscape architect of record. So this is Glenn. And it turns out you're winning multiple awards tonight. Well, we're, we're winning quite a few. We're pretty proud of that. Awesome. But the one you're most proud of is? Stone Brewery. And the Bistro and Gardens are winning the President's Award, which is the number one award tonight at the ASLA, American Society of Landscape Architects. Good morning, Greg Cook here, CEO and co-founder of the Stone Brewing Company and the Stone Brewing World Bistro and Gardens. I'm glad you're here and I'd love to show you a few features. Now this basin behind me is actually what is called a detention basin or retention basin. It's designed to hold stormwater runoff for the 50 or 100 year flood. And these are usually just sloped when planted with uh, what they call it, that spray seed stuff, you know, the hydro seed and uh, left and you see them around the edges of freeways and around the edges of industrial parks like essentially this one is. And we had the idea, what if we placed our building and our restaurant right on the edge of this detention pond and then landscaped it? Uh, sure, when it's raining, well, people don't want to be out here anyways and it will flood, uh, but most of the time, Southern California, we can actually use it. And so that's what we do. Sustainability and environmental friendliness, frankly, is just its part of our basic ethos. I think this is really quite common, actually, amongst small brewers. We do like to be an example as best we can. This cobble right here is actually, interestingly enough, reject headstone material. It's a local granite quarry only 15 miles from here as the crow flies, and they make cobble from their reject stuff. Uh, even used it as our centerpiece. And you can see one side is actually polished. What they do is they polish it for the headstone material and then they see flaws or characteristics they don't like and they, they toss it aside. Uh, I often call the gardens here the island of misfit trees because um, most of these trees were kind of also again rejects. And I go through and I select all these oddballs because what I wanted was a natural feeling. And of course, nature just doesn't make these, uh, what they call the standard, you know, the straight up tree with a nice big brown canopy. Nature goes all in her own way. And I wanted these gardens to reflect mother nature. So uh, we haven't really manicured. Uh, we have some groupings and I have some different themes, but it's uh, allowed to, uh, it really allows mother nature to express herself. All of these walls were also built uh, by hand. Myself, I actually spent probably about 1,500 hours over a year and a half of stone wall building time, plus volunteers. And uh, it's all, this is just stone from, from the, the local area here, mixed with some stone that was donated by a local stone yard. Uh, all of the rock uh, here in the gardens, about 97% more or less, is native to this particular site. And we have about 3% that was brought in and there's some mishmash around that you can see. Speaking of volunteers, just to show out a couple, this is a, a volunteer oak here. We've got a couple of volunteer uh, pine trees. I've decided that that's where Mother Nature wanted this pine tree. Who am I to disagree? This was designed as uh, various themes here in the garden. We have the riparian habitat through the middle with the stream, and that is essentially recirculated stormwater. Uh, so we don't have to fill this other than maybe adding a little bit of water just during the middle of the summer to keep some water in there but mostly uh, mother nature again provides the water behind me is uh, about a foot thick table it's the coffee table i call it the 10,000 pound coffee table so it's another use for it now these are the sliced pieces there's other sliced pieces um, if you think uh, these pieces almost like a loaf of bread there's the heel and in quarry terms, I've learned that's called a rough back. Uh, and then there's the interior slices. So this is an interior slice of bread, right? It's got the crust on it, but it's uh, on smooth on both sides, just like the big coffee table. And well, out in the gardens, I'll show you some pieces that are equivalent of the crust. I was talking about the rough backs or like the heels on the loaf of bread. Here's a couple of examples. Clearly you can see the, the quarry marks and the drilling marks from when they quarry. Again, this stuff is just scattered around at the quarry site. They don't really use it for anything. And uh, this is another rough back. It's only about this deep, and it's got a smooth uh, surface on the other side from what was sliced. So I use these uh, for retaining. Uh, 
Hey, personally, I think this is a little bit better looking than those uh, interlocking uh, kind of wall stacking, uh, you know, concrete things that they use. Those are all right, but this seemed like a, a way to use some reject, you know, a, you know repurposed material, if you will. Um, it's already existing, and uh, I think it's better looking. It's certainly more interesting. That's my opinion. Behind me right here is what we call the Stonewall Project. Actually about 85-90% of these stones are from the site, from the, the construction, the grading of this entire development. The Stonewall Project was a charity project. Uh, we involved volunteers and community members to select stones and place them in this wall to tilt up construction and uh, we sold the stones for charitable donations, raising just shy of $100,000 for the local community. Uh, each one of these stones is actually owned by somebody. We've got a, a Y and, and X axis uh, chart so they can find them, but most people now know where these stones are. We also incorporated a lot of sort of found and used and salvaged items around here in the Stone Brewing Little Bistro and Gardens, including uh, the sprick that's right here. I actually saw a building being knocked down in downtown San Diego, uh, right by the ballpark. And I contacted the developer and I said, hey, can I uh, salvage some of that brick? It looks like it's all going to go to a dump because they just had it in big loose piles scattered with everything. And they said, uh, no liability thing. I called back and I asked again and they said, no liability, blah, blah, blah. I called back uh, a third time, maybe a week or so later, and I said, you know, I've got beer. And they said, well, I think we could work something out. The power of beer for you. I thank you for your time and attention. Cheers.